Tonight I'm going to preach a message titled, The Facts and the Truth. How many know this world goes by the facts? Come on. How many know it's a fact that every day when you open your mailbox, there's a stack of bills sitting in that mailbox? That is a fact. Can I get an amen? It is a fact that we all don't have enough money to have the needs that we want to have. That's a proven fact. Unless we're all millionaires. I'm far from it. It is a fact. You turn on the 6 o'clock news, you'll see wars and rumors of war. You'll see death, murder, violence. You'll see drugs, alcohol. You'll see hatred. That's a fact. And if we as people would be here on earth tonight, just looking at the facts, we'd walk out of this place pretty depressed. Come on. Amen. Yes, the facts are there. But tonight I'm going to talk about the facts too. But I'm also going to talk about the truth. We have the truth in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The Word of God said, by His stripes we are healed. That's the truth. The doctors may say there's no hope for you, but the word of God says by his stripes you are healed. Amen? That's the truth. The facts are that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the facts. But the truth is that Jesus Christ went to Calvary and shed his blood for you and me. And on the third day there's an empty tomb. That's the truth. Amen? Y'all got to give me some amens tonight. All right, Mark, the fifth chapter. I'm gonna, we're going to read a passage about a woman who had the facts, but she found the truth. Is that okay? Amen. All right, we all know the story probably once we get reading here. The fifth chapter, we're going to start with the 21 verse. And when Jesus passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. And he was hot nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by a name which he saw him and fell at his feet and besaw him greatly saying my little daughter lieth at the point of death that's a fact his daughter was dying I pray thee come and lay hands on her that she may be healed and that she may live Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him and a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years had suffered many things of physicians and had spent all that she had and nothing was better and rather grew worse. Here's a woman. The word of God says she has an issue of blood, which means she had a blood disease, kind of like AIDS today. And she's had this for 12 years and she spent all the money she had. The facts were that she was broke, tilt. El Broco, kind of like me. No money. And that was a fact. She had spent everything that she had. She went to the best hospitals, the university, the mail, wherever. She went to every hospital there was and found every physician that she could find and spent all the money that she had. And yet there was no hope of her ever being cured. That was the facts. And I could see this woman, doctor after doctor, the doctor said, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. Here's your bill. Goes to the next doctor. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. Here's your bill. And she spent all she had, and there was no hope in her life of being healed. How many know those are the facts? She was broke and she was sick. That's pretty low, isn't it? But I'm sure this woman probably walked out of the hospital and heard a crowd talking. Hey, Jesus is coming. This Jesus can heal with just a touch. They say he's the Messiah. They say that he's a king of the Jews. And he's coming to our city. And she began to hear the people whisper, kind of like the people in Oxford are, Hey, there's a church down the street. Now, if you go there, they'll lay hands on you and you'll fall out. 
and people's actually gotten healed. And she began to hear him talk about this man, Jesus, and she thought, I, I could see her going home and thinking, well, here's the facts. I'm broke, and I'm sick. I owe every doctor in the country, and I can't work because I'm sick. <clears throat> and here's another fact. There's this man coming to town that might be able to help me. And there you read that it said that the people thronged around Jesus. Everywhere he went, they, they were, I mean, everybody wanted to get a piece of this man, okay? They wanted to touch Jesus. How many know when you got the anointing and you're filled with the anointing like we talked about last night, people are going to beat doors down to get to you. Come on. Yes, How many want to live full like that? Amen. Jesus is the best example you can have. Yep. Here's a man named Jesus coming into the city. And the word of God said people pressed about him. And I could see the disciples trying to keep him back. Come on, dudes, you're going to wrinkle his new suit. Come on now. You know, trying to keep him off Jesus. And they just tried to get to him. If I could just touch him, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hear me. And they, they gathered around him. And here's this little old woman. Knowing that her only hope was in Jesus. She got there and seen the crowd. She seen the crowd gathered around him. She probably couldn't even see Jesus in the crowd. He's probably way out there in the middle, and she couldn't even see who he was. But she knew her only hope was in him. She knew her only truth was in him. The 26 says, there was verse that. Instead of getting better, it rather it grew worse. And in 27, it said, She heard of Jesus. We just talked about that. And came and pressed behind. This is the part I like. How many know when you spend all you had and you're desperate, you can touch the heart of Jesus? Amen. She came in behind. And touched his garment. For she said, if I be made touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, he turned to his to, about the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou see the multitude thronging thee, and thou say, Who touched me? Could you see Peter saying that? <laughs> Jesus, come on now. Look at these people, and you're saying, Who touched you? I bet Jesus sometimes just wanted to go, Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and his disciples said unto him, Thou see the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her. That had done the same. But the woman feareth and trembling, knowing that what she had done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. This is some good stuff, man. You don't have to watch no soap operas, guys. Just read the Bible, man. Yeah. But here's a woman. The facts was all there. But the truth was, was Jesus was in town. Amen? Tonight you may look at your life and you see a bunch of facts. You can list them on a piece of paper. And if you looked at those facts all day, you'll be the most depressed person there is in the world. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ is in the house tonight. The truth is here. It don't matter what the facts say. The truth is, the Word of God says that He is your healer, amen. He is your salvation, amen. He is your victory, amen. That's the truth. Come on. Somebody get happy. Come on. We about to have some church if you want it tonight. Do you want to have some church? 
Come on, don't sit there and look at me. I said the truth is the word of God says that by his stripes we are healed. Devil, I'm going to work you over tonight. The facts may look great. If I look at my life, the facts are I got a bunch of bills and not enough money to pay them. The facts are I got bad knees and my back hurts every morning and I have a hard time getting out of bed. I got that arthritis, brothers. <laughs> Those are the facts. The facts are that because all the drugs and alcohol I did, I got stomach aches every day and I can't even drink a Pepsi anymore because my stomach's so tore up from booze. Those are the facts. But the truth is, 1992 in a jailhouse, Jesus Christ reached down and he set this boy free. The truth is, I haven't done a drug. The truth is, I only want to taste another drop of alcohol the rest of my life. And the truth is, I didn't put a gun to my head and pull the trigger. I put it down, and that's Jesus into my heart. That's the truth. So here's a woman getting ready to touch Jesus. How many know your faith will touch God? A faith of a mustard seed. Faith is like a muscle. You've got to exercise it. I learned that last year. Having my own ministry, never knowing where the next dime is going to be. Tonight, you may look at the facts in your life. There's, there's so many of them, you can't even see Jesus. How many of you ever been to that point? You've tried to look through all the problems and all the facts that the world has, and you can't even see the hem of his garment. That's where faith comes in. Come on. That's where faith comes in. Knowing that he's there with your miracle. Tonight there's some of you that need financial miracles. The truth is there. Some of you need physical healings. The truth is there. Some of you need family miracles. The truth is there. Some of you need direction in your life. The truth is there by faith. How many know there's always going to be walls in your life? Amen. Come on. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Joshua. Is this all right preaching? Or? Yeah. Joshua, the sixth chapter. I love this story. <clears throat> About three years ago, two years ago, we went to a city with a, Mike McAfee. He said, he called me up, brother, because we got to go save a church. And of course, I'm gun ho to do anything. I said, okay, Mike, let's go. He left out all the details on the way there for me. We get to this town called Greenville, Illinois. Population about 10,000. No, about 5,000. All the way there, we got 5 o'clock in the morning, all the way there. Mike didn't say nothing to him. We talked about everything else but that. And I had Troy with me. I can always talk Troy and go on these adventurous trips with me. So here's us three amigos on our trip to save a church. Because they're about ready to throw in the door and close it up. The pastor called. They said, guys, we need, we need you to come. We're about to give up. We're discouraged. I never met the pastors. never been to a town before. So we took off, five in the morning, hit a snowstorm on the way. It was about this time of year. <clears throat> Mike said, we're about to the city. We begin to come up over a hill, and then he seen a town down there, and we drove into it. And as soon as we hit that town, I mean, a heaviness hit me. Oh, man. I felt like every devil in hell jumped on my back. And that van got quiet. All, none, none of the three of us talked. I didn't know what the other guys was feeling. They didn't know what I was feeling. But I was pleading the blood of Jesus over me. That's what I was doing. Because I felt a demon-possessed town. We drove in. 
Drove through the town. Nobody spoke. Mike got his cell phone. He called the pastor for directions. We went to their house. We walked in the door. and The pastor's wife just sitting at the table just a ball. Troy looked at me as we walked in there. He says, do you feel something? I said, I felt something since we pulled in this town, brother. He says, I've been feeling it too. He says, I've been pleading the blood. I said, I've been doing the same thing, man. We walked in that house, and I'll never forget looking at those two pastors. They said, we can't take it anymore. They said, we are the only Pentecostal church left in this town. They said, the St. Tang Church ran out the Assembly of God pastor. They ran out the Church of God pastor. They closed the doors. It's just us and five members. They said, they burned a cross in our front yard the other night, telling us to get out of town. As we sit there and talk more, I found out that <clears throat> it was the Midwest headquarters of the Satanic Church in that town. The KKK is in that town. And the worst thing, there's a, a Methodist college there. It's supposed to be a Christian town. Big old Methodist church. How many know there is a spirit of religion? Amen. Come on, spirit of witchcraft. Because when we drove through that town, I seen the beautiful college, I seen the beautiful churches. I thought, wow, this is good. And they began to tell me about everything that was happening. They said, guys, we need some support. We're not going to make it. And, I, and as we got back in the van and drove to the church, and it was just a little church. I mean, you could sit at the pulpit and shook hands with the people as they come in. It was small. I mean, it's about from here. Just a little old one-room schoolhouse what it is. As we began to drive over there, this came to my mind, Joshua and the walls. And that night, <clears throat> they said, we don't know who's going to show up. We called a few other churches. They said, we told them that a couple of evangelists was coming in. We didn't know what's going to happen. So we sat there about five minutes before service. And it was the pastor and us three. And pretty soon, here come a family in. Here come another preacher from another town. Before we know it, we had the, the whole place full. And there was a little church outside of town, and, and they had a, a choir. And they came in, about five of them. And we began to have church that night. The anointing of God fell in that little place, and we were so packed, we couldn't, I mean, it was, it was packed. You know what it felt like? It felt like that was the only refuge in that whole town. We began to have church in that place that night. The anointing of God fell. And me and Mike ended up tag team preaching. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen, but we did it. And everything we preached together was about the walls of Jericho. We began to preach on how we need to tear down the walls of this world. And we began to, every time I think about it, I think about this church and this town. That was three years ago. They're still in there. They're the only Pentecostal one, but the devil hasn't run them out of town yet. Amen? I told that pastor, I said, the facts may look like the whole town is against you. The facts may look like the devil has declared war upon you. The facts may be that every time I come and do revival, they drop a dead cat on the steps of the church or something like that. Those may be the facts, but the truth is you have the anointing of God inside of you. And the truth is you are the only hope for this city. Amen. I told them pastors, I said, I don't care if it's midnight, you call me up. I'll be on my way to Greenville. I don't know how many times I've been there, but I'll support them to save that city. Amen? Because Amen. the facts... Ain't greater than the truth. Amen? Amen. All right, here's the story of Joshua. Let's go to the sixth verse. Now Jericho, the first chapter, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, ye I have given thy hand, given thy hand Jer Jericho. And the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shall do six days. It's going down to the tenth verse. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, 
Ye shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. How many feel like shouting tonight? Now here are the facts. Here's Joshua and his little army has been wandering around, hungry, tired, just looking for where their destiny is to be. Here are the facts. Here's a city that they must conquer, where the walls were so big that they rode chariots up and down them. And nobody went in, and nobody came out. And if Joshua had sat down and, and looked at the facts, there was no way he was going to take this city. Those were the facts. That he could have tried every strategic plan that a, that a general of an army could do. Take him from the back. Take him from all sides. Dig under the walls. Climb over the top of them. He could have tried everything they, there was possible to do. But the facts were that they would have been killed. Either that or they would have starved to death in battle. But along came the truth. Come on. I said the facts were there, but along came the truth. The truth was that God said, take off your shoes, buddy. You're on holy ground. God was telling him that he's with him. And the truth was, God said that he was going to give him that city. And the truth was, God said, you don't even have to lift a finger. I just want you to march around. Come on. How many know sometimes we try to, to take care of the facts ourselves? When really, we just need to march around with the truth. Amen? These people that decide they're going to take care of the abortion clinics by blowing them up. Use the truth. Amen. Thou shalt not murder. So Joshua now has the truth. Whenever you put the truth up against the facts, how many know who's going to win or who's going to be? Come on. So they begin to march. And Joshua tells those people, I don't want you to even lift a voice. Don't even make a sound. Joshua just doing what God told him to do. So he says, okay, guys, here we're going to do. We're going to march around seven times. And don't even make a noise. Everybody be really quiet. So they begin to march. They did this. How many days? Six days. And God told him on the seventh day, march around. How many times? <coughs> Seven more. I begin to think about that. It took him a whole day. For six days, it took him a whole day to make it around that city. And they've kept quiet all six days. How many know when you begin to feel the anointing of God, you can't keep it down? How many have ever tried to do that? <laughs> By the sixth day, they're wanting to shout. They're wanting to say, praise you, Jesus. They're wanting to thank God by the sixth day. So here comes the seventh day, and they didn't march around one time. They marched around seven times. How many believe the anointing was on those folks? Come on. How many believe the anointing? Because you can do something with the anointing you can't do in the flesh. You can do something with the truth that you can't do in the facts. You can do something with the power of God that you can't do by your own means. See, by their own means, it took them a whole day to make it around there. But with the power and the anointing of God, it only took seven times to go around in one day. Come on. By the seventh time of the seventh day, I believe the power of God was on them boys. And they had stopped looking at the facts and they began to look at the truth that God was with them. Come on. They had begun to look at the truth that God was with them with every step they took around those walls. Come on. See, those first six days, they were looking at the facts. These are the walls. I'm starving. My feet hurt. I got blisters on my blisters. I'm tired of walking around these walls. I'm hungry. I don't want to eat beans again. I'm tired of eating beans. I want... I want, I want something better. 
Those walls, look at, they're laughing at us. They're spitting on us. The other day they threw a tomato and hit me in the head. I'm tired of walking around these walls. But how many know by the seventh day they begin to think, Jesus, those walls are starting to look smaller. Lord, I know you're going to bring a miracle. Lord, this is the fourth time around the seventh day. Lord, I'm starting to feel something. Lord, I'm feeling something inside of me. Lord, you are bigger than those walls. God, you're bigger than those chariots that ride upon them. This is the fifth time around. God, I'm starting to feel something. I can't hold it in anymore, God. Lord, you are the truth, and you're going to bring us a victory. This is the sixth time around. God, I'm almost to a trot now. Lord, I got a little jig going because I'm thinking about how holy you are. This is the seventh time around, God. Lord, I'm starting to see the truth. Lord, I'm starting to see the truth. You're going to bring them walls down, God. I'm starting to see the victory, God. Oh, Lord, what? He said, shout glory! Oh, Lord, I see the truth. Them walls are coming down. Come on. Come on. They begin to see the truth that God was going to set them free. Come on. My friend, when you get past the facts and get to the truth, there's a miracle coming your way. Come on. There was a miracle coming his way. I'm about to ready to start preaching now. I've been playing around earlier. When you stop looking at the facts and begin to look at the truth, there's going to be a miracle in your life. Come on. We spend too much time. We spend too much time looking at the facts. It's time the body of Christ take their jackets off and look the devil straight in the eye and say, devil, I'm not looking at the facts anymore. I'm going to start looking at the truth. And the truth says, you lose, you loser. And at the end of the Bible, my God is going to blow a trumpet. And it don't matter what you've ever done. It don't matter what you've ever said. My God is going to call me home. I'm going to step off this earth. And you're going to lose the battle, you old devil. That's the truth. Give me the truth any day and I'll be a happy man. Tonight's the night to look at the truth. Be a Joshua generation. Stop looking at the facts. Begin to look at the truth. This world is looking for the truth. They've tried the facts. They need the truth. Amen. And the truth is, it don't matter what you've ever done in your whole life. I've done things that people will never forgive me of. But the truth is, Jesus Christ covered every one of them. And I'm forgiven. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.